Good evening everybody, um, just um, introduce the final night of Revelation, we're going to be looking at um, Revelation 22 um, and um, Jenny and Laurel will be coming back very shortly and starting at 7 o'clock. We are going to play a song up until then but I just want to say I hope you all enjoyed this um, Bible study online, um, it's been good fun, we've had Simon and Elizabeth Vincent one night. Um, I've done one, but mostly it's been um, Jen and L Reverend Laura. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you get some out, out of tonight and see who wins. You unravel me with the melody around me with a song of deliverance from my enemy till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear
the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and say, I am a child. everyone. I've just been listening to um, N.T. Wright, the great theologian, singing a song called Genesis, which I will have to share with you later, Ooh. which I thought was quite amusing. A new song? Comic? Well, it's kind of, I think amusing? It's, I'm not sure it's meant to be amusing, but I thought it was, but it was really quite interesting. It was all about Genesis. Anyway, obviously the book of the Bible. And if you know anything about N.T. Wright, he's an amazing theologian. So there he is playing this with another guy called Frank, 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 I can't remember anyway, <laughs> playing it. And it was just really interesting. And I thought, it's interesting because we talk a little bit about Genesis tonight even, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do. And I was thinking, to the, to, the, to the tune of yesterday. So I think this is what lockdown has done to our great theologians. <laughs> oh, I can't be as good what, as our lip syncs. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is what lockdown has done to us. And as we're gradually going out... Tonight, Jen, it's our last one, isn't I know. it? Online. We got so to the end. We got to the end, and we really enjoyed um, doing this actually and uh, discovering more about Revelation. Um, over the weeks, coming weeks, we are going to stop, uh, we won't be doing this anymore, and other stuff will stop, but other stuff will continue as well. Sunday will continue to be online on um, yeah. Zoom, and we continue to do our Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Um, on Zoom or on live on Facebook, uh, and also that will be happening at at church. We'll be doing rev uh, re reflections. A reflection. On a Wednesday morning. On a Wednesday and you morning. can physically come if you, you want. You can physically come. So we are starting to go back into the building. So that's the reasons why some things are start stopping. But everything is on our YouTube channel. Yeah. This whole series is on the YouTube channel. So we want to encourage people to really just pick it up again and have a look at it if you want to. And also, we will continue to develop the YouTube channel. So we're going to put other series up there and other things up there um, as time goes on and, and through the years. Not not just suddenly, but through the years. So we're looking at how we can develop that and use that more. So it's been great. So, very excited. Shall I start with prayer? Then? Yes, that would be great. Right. Let us pray. Let's, Lord, we think of all those um, tonight who... Um, we think of all those that have suffered through this time during the lockdown with COVID. We think of all those who have lost someone with COVID and we pray, Lord Jesus, by the power of Spirit, Lord Jesus, that as we come out of lockdown, there will not be this second spike. We pray, Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you will go across this nation, across this world and get rid of this disease. Lord, that people will be well. I pray for those that have, been, um, that have had it as well, Lord Jesus, that you will heal them. Heal their bodies, strengthen them, Lord Jesus. And Lord, you are God who loves us. Help us, Lord, to just draw close to you, and um, Lord, in this world that has so been so much suffering. And Lord, as we also go back, help us not to forget the lessons we've learned, to appreciate relationship, to appreciate each other, and Lord, just to, to really just make the most of everything we've got every day. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 I think we've got a few notices there for you. Oh, thank you, Bob. <laughs> Bob thinks we're brilliant. We think we're brilliant too, Bob and Pam. Pam and Bob, yeah. Um, yes, anyway, where are we? So I we're coming you... to the end. This is the last chapter. This is, 
the entire point and purpose of the entire Bible, that all the 66 books point to this. Yeah, absolutely. So here we are at the end. Eden is restored. Verses 3 to 5 talk about Eden is restored. There's quite a lot to say just in those uh, first few verses. There is. Um, yeah, I mean, the first bit, we've got the river of water of life, haven't we? Yes, the and river water. of life. Yeah, the river of life. And the river of life, actually, what it's referring to, of course, is the um, eternal life. The water of life is referring to water, uh, eternal life here. And you remember last week we talked about Samaritan woman, and do you remember that drawing? He, he talked about the well and the drawing the water, yes. and it was the water of life. And this is about fullness of life. It's saying, actually, in this verse at the beginning here, it's saying, we are actually, you have fullness of life. We will have eternal blessings. Can you imagine having eternal blessings? And it will satisfy our spiritual thirst. Wonderful, wonderful scriptures there. And we have there then the tree of life mentioned. And of course, I talked a minute ago about Genesis. We go back in Genesis and we see the tree in the Garden of Eden. We almost end where we start, but in a better yeah. place, if you like, is the way to put it, isn't it? Adam and Eve, they, um, they, they were... They were not to eat from the tree of life, but of course they did, and they brought sin, that brought sin into the world. Evil existed at that time. I'll talk a little bit about that later on again. Um, but now, of course, because Jesus sacrificed, there is no sin. All is put right. Now we can eat from the tree. All is perfect. Everything has been put right because Jesus died and rose again, and we are secure. We are secure for eternity. There is nothing evil. There will be nothing sinful that exists ever again. It's done. Yes, have you got more to add to that? Just to, yeah, just to reiterate about, obviously, the, the river of life and that, you know, mm. we can't live without water. No. Our bodies can't, you know, we die very quickly. Water, we all need water. The plants need water, animals, we all, we all need we water. Do. And it's just an amazing symbol of richness, provision, peace. And that just leads us, actually, I'm just going to read from Psalm 46, verses 4 to 5, where it says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Um, I love the way that everything obviously connects in the Bible. Um, and obviously, again, you know, this just the tree being at the beginning of the end. You yeah. know, it's the it's restoration. All things have been made perfect. And it also talks about the leaves um, on yeah. the tree. Actually, if, after the healing of the nation, that doesn't mean that there's going to be sickness there. Because actually, the interpretation of healing actually means health-giving doesn't yeah. actually mean healing how we mean healing in yes, this particular it point. It doesn't mean heaven's going to be all this and it or yeah, anything like that. Yeah, but it, I, yeah. um, I had uh, the definition I found was it means the water produces life and strength. Yeah. So in other words, these are healing waters, meaning they're good waters. Yeah. They're good waters. That's right, they're health giving, yeah. Um, and in number three, it talks about no longer a curse, doesn't it? One, yes. There'll be no, there won't be any curse. In other, in other words, nothing bad will exist in God's presence. Nothing bad will exist, and and actually, uh, I want to encourage you to go and have a look at uh, Zechariah prophecy, um, the prophecy of Zechariah uh, in chapter fourteen. It was a bit too long for us to read now, but actually, that kind of fits with this as well. But it's basically saying there is no longer curse; everything is done. Um, and we were looking at, we got quite excited about verses four, didn't we? When we thought about they will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads as well. You know, a wonderful. And I just think actually the contrast. I'm going off subject here because I can't help myself. That's fine. Um, when the contrast, when you think of the number of the beast, and here we have though God's people. Yeah. They have what do they have on their forehead? They have, you know, the name of God on their forehead. We and you know when you think about the mark of the Holy Spirit, talks about the mark of the Holy Spirit all the way through the New Testament. We we who believe in Jesus are marked with the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, and we will see him face to face. Imagine that, yeah. seeing Jesus face to face. And it's a little bit like we have that now we were talking about. Though, yeah, we? so we don't have to think that we have to wait till then, in yeah. a way. To, I mean, obviously, we're not necessarily going to see him face to face in that way. But, it, you know, because Jesus, we can know something of the face of God now. Yeah. And that is uh, reminded, we are reminded of that in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, that says, For God, who said... Let light shine out of darkness. May his light shine in our own hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Yeah. So we can have that now already, in, you know, a little bit like, of it. Because it's almost like we've got one foot on heaven and one foot on earth now. Yeah. So we experience uh, um, salvation now and we're being saved. It's a yeah. two-way thing, isn't it? And that, that fits kind of with number five where it talks about God being light, doesn't it, in the... There we have this wonderful eternal city and the light. We're not going to need a light because God is going to be our light. 
And if you think about like 1 John, you know, where it talks about Jesus is the light of the world. That's right. Verses 4 to 9. In him was life, John 1. And the life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John and he came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Amazing. You know, so again, it's just a wonderful richness of connecting it, the whole meta, the meta story. Yes. Oh. Um, so in these little few verses here, I'm just going to summarise some of the things um, that it says in verses 3 to 5. So it says, no more curse, that meant perfect restoration. Um, the throne is in their midst, that meant perfect administration. Uh, servants shall serve, perfect subordination. We shall see his face, perfect transformation. Um, name on our foreheads, perfect identification. And God is light, perfect illumination. And reigning forever, perfect exaltation. So there's just there's an awful lot in those, those five verses. Terrific a lot. And yeah. um, as we move on to six to nine underlying kind of theme is there is no other God you know and we are to love God with our heart yeah. our soul our mind and our neighbours ourselves it's the first commandment isn't it God first which is always yeah. about and you have this wonderful picture of John worshipping God we are called to worship in heaven we'll be worshipping in heaven you know and the angel tells John oh, as well um, about not to not to in 10 to 11 it talks about the vision doesn't it and the, the vision he's just seeing and actually, this is a prophecy that is not to be sealed. And it, before, if you look at sort of often the prophecies in, we, we saw earlier, they were sealed, weren't they? And they had to be unsealed. And here he's saying, do not seal this. It, it, leave it open. And what actually yeah. that's saying is, this is the message for now. This is the message for you and me today. This is God saying to us today, do not seal this message. Today, this is our hope. This is the message we have. This is prophecy for us. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, it's about... This book is the warnings, yeah. you know, and if these aren't sufficient, there is no more that God can say on the matter. No. If this isn't enough, you know, this is the final thing, the final saying. Um, and it also talks in verse 12 about, you know, I'm coming soon. Mm. So there's this thing about it's going to be sudden um, and there won't be time for change. So there's always a message of urgency. Um, and that's actually reflected, I'm just going to look in Matthew 24, 44. Yeah, so we need to be ready. Yes, it? we need to be ready. 44, it says, So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. So, yeah, we need to be ready. Um, it also says in verse 13 about the Alpha and the Omega. You know, these are well-known phrases yeah. that we, you know, beginning, of the, um, beginning yeah. of the end. And this actually is used two other times in Revelation earlier. And both on those occasions they referred to God, whereas this occasion it's referring to Christ. So there's a couple of things here that obviously connect it all up, and it just proves that you know Christ's identity as who He is, yep. um, the first and the last, that He is Yahweh, um, and it's a so it's just a, a confirmation, a reminder of who He is. And you have, of course, this wonderful vision again. Uh, we talked to it various times in Revelation. If you remember the the, the white robes. And um, being one point that when they were dipped in blood, yeah. I remember that it's about the sacrifice of Jesus making us clean. Actually, you know, we we're going to talk a bit a minute a bit about I know um, the fact that we can't earn our salvation; we just accept our salvation. You know, but actually, it says here about those who are their, have their robes and they want them to be pure. The point is, they want pureness. They're looking for pureness. These these people who wash their robes, they they wanting to live God's way. That's what it's saying. It's saying they will remain faithful. That's what it means by that to mm -hmm. Jesus, and they are preparing for His return. We are to prepare for His return. You know, God is coming back. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are coming back. Jesus Christ has made that possible. Yeah, definitely. Verse sixteen. Um, Oh, oh, sorry. She's got uh, yeah, so I've got a little bit of 14. 14, so a reminder that we can eat from the tree of life because our sin is removed by Jesus, death and resurrection. He conquered death and he rose, rose again. So we will be able to eat from this tree of life and those who eat will live forever, it says, and ever and ever. This is the eternal tree. And in 15, all who are evil and false will be excluded. Now, we've already read earlier on about what's going to happen to evil and destruction. And here's a reminder. 
everything that's evil, everything that's false will be excluded. Those that deceive will not exist anymore. This is the perfect world. We can't even conceive what this will be like. Can you imagine? Remember, all we'd be put into the lake of the sulfur we, we've spoken about. Evil would be destroyed. Satan has gone. Um, Satan is, all, well, is also called the father of lies. How many of us believe lies? You know, I've said so many times, you will listen to a million positive things and you will not believe them about yourself. But somebody says one negative thing and you guarantee that's the thing you'll take on and you will believe. And it's because Satan is very clever. And he's the, um, yeah, he's the father of lies. And in John 8, 44, it says, if I can read it, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. Where he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So often it's saying, you know, so often we listen to the father of lies, don't we, about, you know, it'd be very easy to read Revelation and go, oh, but that can't be me. You know, we will hear the negative, not the positive. When God is saying, come with me, be with me, you're saved. God loves you. And so often we want to believe the opposite, don't yeah. we? It's so easy to believe that. Because yeah. the Father and I are Satan will whisper in our ears, Jesus is truth, though. Jesus yeah. brings truth. Oh, sorry. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> Your wiggly chair. <laughs> I, Jesus, have sent an angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Yeah. That's verse 16. And this is how this is Jesus saying he's authenticating the entire book. You know, it is all true. And I know you th you've got a comment about the root. Of I offspring. have, yeah. The root of the offspring is Jesus, obviously, but it's actually saying, "Oh, where have we gone? What? Are we still on? Yes, okay, oh, okay. We're not that's on our right. screen. We're not on our that's screen. Okay. That's okay. As long as we're still on, we're not on screen. The root of the offspring. Um, are you sure we're still on? Well, I'm a minute behind, but we're still on. Okay, do you want to double check? Because nobody's saying anything. Okay. 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 Let's keep going. Okay. You keep going. Okay, okay, we're good. So the root of the offspring um, is actually saying he's the line of David. He's the creator of all. Ah, oh, there we are. Brilliant, thank you. <laughs> so it's really saying that, you know, he's the, he's the line of David. He's the creator of all. Um, he is the morning bright star, which actually means the light of salvation for all. For all. Jesus is the light of salvation for all. His, d d God's desire is none shall perish. God's desire is we're all included. He loves us all. And that's the point. And then we move swiftly on to 17, where it starts to talk about the bride and the Holy Spirit. And it says to the whole world, come. To Jesus, come. Yeah. I think you've got something more about that. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, it depends on your translation, but in mine, it says, "Who, whosoever desires." That mm. word's really big. That's absolutely everybody there is, and it doesn't matter if you don't understand, you know, everything about the Christian faith. It doesn't matter if you can't sort of feel it. If you expect to feel something amazing, you don't. That doesn't matter. You don't have to be able. You don't have to be worthy. You no. just have to come. Whosoever can take the water of life that is offered, you know, and it's understanding that open invitation. And it talks about being thirsty again there. Again, living waters. Yeah. Jesus gives us living waters, eternal waters. This is what he's offering us. This is good news. It's for everyone who will believe and drink. It is unlimited. And you know what? Salvation cannot be earned. I, so often we carry on trying to earn our salvation. It cannot be earned. Jesus paid the price on the cross. It is a free gift. Everyone is invited to be part of the kingdom of God. We just have to say, yes, Lord, be with me. I accept your relationship. Just be with him. You know, we get saved. We get to know Jesus then. And we work out what that means in our life. But our salvation is never negotiable then god saved us on the cross when we accept jesus as our lord and our savior and say yes to him you know we cannot do anything to make him love us more or make him love us less that's the point mm. you know the holy spirit changes us we become different because of that relationship like any relationship we we start to become like the people we're with you know mm. so if you're with jesus you will show show in the way you live yeah we cannot earn it. I found a really good quote. I love this. There is no barrier between you and Jesus except your stubborn will. 
and I can think of a few people <laughs> that applies yes, to that I know. Um, we have to remember that we can't bring anything to save or justify or commend ourselves before God, but we can take the salvation he offers. And the entire Bible, all the prophets, the teachings, everything is focused on this burning ray. Come to, Come to Jesus. Come and take the water of life freely. Come to Jesus. And there's a warning in 18 and 19. The warning is not, it's, it's actually saying it's about the, you know, do not add to this. Do not mm. take away from it. It's actually a warning of not distorting the message of the book of prophecy. Do not distort this message. Handle the word of God always with respect. Don't use it to get your own way. Don't miss new scripture to deceive others, you know, new scripture um, to lead people to Jesus, to, to the God who loves them. And be, be, um, but do not distort, distort sorry, scripture in any way. Yeah. It's a warning there. Yeah. Um, and remember, of course, in 20, it goes on. Remember, we don't know the time, the hour. Let's be ready. Yeah. What is being ready? We talk about what is being ready, you know, the bride being ready. It actually means, you know, actually... I just want to follow you, Jesus, go your way, Jesus, and I'll make sure that I am saying yes to you, and I am, you know, I say yes to you, Jesus, and it's being ready. Those who believe, bring the message of hope. We will bring the message of hope to the world. Let's bring the message of hope and say, yes, Jesus, I will bring the message of hope to the world. Yeah, these last two verses are all about being watchful and ready. It is. Yeah. And it actually ends as Genesis um, began, actually, in paradise. Yay! Yeah. But now evil has gone forever. Whereas Genesis, you had Adam and Eve, and Eve, even Eve, Adam and Eve trotting and talking with God, which I always have that lovely picture of them kind of trotting around having a good conversation with God, because that's how I imagine myself with Jesus. You know, now all will worship God, you know, and next, um, and we will then be face to face with Him, you know, just as Adam and Eve were face to face with God, so will we be. But then Genesis, you know, you also had the garden and you had the evil snake, didn't you? Satan snake, you know, wandering around trying to cause trouble. This city has no evil in it. There is no snake trying to push us over and, you know, make us do anything wrong. There is no evil. There is no sin. It's all gone. We have the new Jerusalem, the new earth, this wonderful, wonderful scriptures. Revelation is a book of hope. It is God is in control, whatever. Amen. It is evil will not win. God wins. That's the point. And we will share in paradise with Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what it's all about. Isn't it? Amen. Can't Amen. get better than that. Amen. 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 <laughs> so we really Amen. wanted to, really the opportunity for people to think about this offer of salvation that is given here in this last chapter this evening. Yeah. And if there is anybody out there who wants to accept that offer, you know, we, we're really asking you really to, to be willing and to put your name and on the chat and to, we can pray for you now. So Lord, yeah. do you want to say more? About I am. That? I was going to suggest we have a few minutes where we just, first of all, I just invite the Holy Spirit to come speak to our hearts to open us up to, to know more of him. We'll have a few minutes, and if you just want to put your name up there, even if it's just that you want to know more of God, you just want to know more of his presence, um, you know, or if you want to say yes to Jesus today, if you want to put your name up there, we're going to pray for you by name. If no one puts their name up, that's fine. You can just do this at home, or if you're watching it later, do it then, but just put your name there. And then I'm going to lead you into just a prayer saying, come Holy Spirit, come Lord Jesus, fill our lives again. Um, you know, um, and so I pray for you, and then we're going to end with the grace. So let's just first of all just start by asking the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, and uh, Lord, that we will live in not with the the lies that the devil tells us, but in the truth of Jesus. And Paul will tell me if there's anyone that needs prayer, that puts a name up, won't you, Paul? Yes, thank you, Paul. We we'll pray for Paul. <laughs> that might take all night, though. Um, <laughs> let us pray, Lord. We um, Thank you and praise you for Revelation, this wonderful prophetic book. Lord, imagine if we didn't have this book in the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for the truths that we've been able to just hear over this period of time, over these weeks, as we've just heard continually that you are in control and that you win. And when you win, we win. Thank you, Lord. And I pray now, Lord Jesus, that everyone that's listening, everyone that's seen this, whenever they see it, Lord, will just now accept 
your Holy Spirit into their lives. Accept the truth of you, Jesus, into their lives and say, I'm going to come to Jesus fully. Maybe just think now, any lies you've heard in your life where you thought you're not good enough, where you thought you needed to earn salvation. Maybe where you just want more of God in your life. So now just come and in this moment ask God to meet with you. If you want to put your name up, we'll pray for you by name. If you don't, that's fine. Just give you a moment now to allow God to minister to you. So Lord Jesus, meet with us now. And maybe you'd want to say this prayer in your heart, or even out loud, wherever you are. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I accept the gift of life you give me. I reject all that is evil. I reject the lies of Satan. I accept the truth of you in my life. And I ask you to live in my heart. Help me to accept more of you every day. To develop the relationship with you. To know the Father through you. And to call now on the Holy Spirit to empower me to live a life knowing that I am a son or daughter of the living God. May these things become truth for me every day in my life. Lord Jesus, take my hand, lead me on. Lord, I pray now that everything I've ever done wrong, I know that is forgiven on the cross. Everything I ever will do wrong is forgiven on the cross. And I know, Lord Jesus, that in you I have a Saviour who will never leave me, who will always love me. And I pray you help me to love you more, Jesus, every day. I ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. So I thought we would say the grace just to end um, our study on Revelation. Hold on. Oh yeah. yeah. Do you want to do that yeah. afterwards? Do that after yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's say the grace together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen, everyone. And we've been asked to wish, which isn't a hard thing to do, is it? No. Trevor, happy, happy 17th birthday. <laughs> birthday. <laughs> happy 17th birthday, Trevor. <laughs> oh, you could have warned us. <laughs> happy 17th birthday, Trevor. Should we sing to him? Yes. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Trevor. Happy birthday to you. Yay. Yay, amen. And be good to see you in the flesh soon, Trevor. Bless you all. And I hope you've really enjoyed this. We've really enjoyed doing it. And um, like I say, I'll be in the church at 10 o'clock tomorrow. I'm doing Haggai, aren't we, Paul? We are. I'm doing Haggai. So um, looking at characters. Um, bless you all. Speak to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye.